let's stay with this concept of GCO C9, which is about proof uh, and angle relationships. This part uh, deals with the relationships found with parallel lines. These are a great set of uh, relationships because they get used in lots of places. Parallel lines happen all throughout geometry. Now, I wanted to start from the very beginning, I guess, the idea of let's generate a set of parallel lines and begin to look at what naturally comes from that. So here I have two lines, uh, line AB uh, and line BC. And what I'm going to do is I want to create uh, some parallel lines. Now let's speak about this for a minute. Of the transformations that we know, rotation, reflection, translation of the isometric ones, one of them is built to, break, to create parallel lines and that's the translation. If you go back to that definition, you will read carefully how uh, when points move, well let's just show you a quick example. If I take this triangle and I translate it here, uh, we would get something that looks, say, like this. Now, built in the definition of a translation is that all uh, angles are preserved because it's isometric, all lengths are preserved, everything moves by a fixed vector, a distance and a direction. So actually it creates parallel lines all throughout. That every line that existed in the pre-image is parallel to its corresponding image segment or line. They would be parallel. It's also obvious that the translation itself creates sets of parallel lines because of the common vector that's being used. So this is the guy we want to use if we're going to play with parallel lines. So if I would like to create a parallel line, I'm going to perform a translation. A translation Uh, by vector BC maps B onto C, known as B prime. So we know it would slide down to this spot. Maps A to A prime maps C to C prime. So we know that they will all go a common, a common uh, angle and a common distance. So everybody slides down and of course we get this line here where BA, the line BA, will be parallel to C A prime. Now this is a known fact, is that if you do a translation, you map uh, the points all in the direction and the distance by that vector. And it's also known by its definition that the, the pre-image and the image lines and segments will be parallel to each other. So to create a parallel line is as easy as a translation. Now what, you, what I want us to find is a nice little item. This little angle. Therefore, angle ABC, this angle ABC, is congruent to its image A prime B prime, C prime. Why is it congruent to its image? Because translations are isometric. So when we perform a translation, we know 
that it's going to copy the angle into its new location. So we know that this angle must equal that translated angle because they are symmetric. Simple. Let's give it a name. These kinds of angles, when we have parallel lines, or not, but when we have parallel lines, are called corresponding angles. And we've established that ABC will always equal its image angle. So corresponding angles are always congruent. A very nice way to use transformations to establish the beginning of many new angles. We'll, we'll bring them out here. But this is known as the corresponding set of angles. Now I'm going to move a little faster now because we can do some of these things um, a little bit quicker now. This is that same diagram, but kind of simplified a bit. We have two parallel lines. We have a line that crosses it. This becomes known as a transversal. I've numbered a number of angles. So let me just uh, take a minute to give you some names, and then we'll talk about some relationships here. Um, the corresponding angles, so they're the ones that slide to position, are like 2 is congruent to 7. Uh, wait, 2 is congruent to 6, 3 is congruent to 7, 1 is congruent to 5, and 4 is congruent to 8. All of these basically translate and land onto the partner. These are called the corresponding angles. Now, there's other angle relationships, and in this part, I'm going to move through it quickly and not do all the main proofs. I'm going to talk through proofs, okay? So, another set of angles are called the alternate interior angles. Now, these ones alternate, and they're in the inside, so that would be 3 and 5, or 4 and 6. Now, by eyesight, you might say they look equal. My answer to you is prove it. Let's do it. I'm going to just verbalize it because of time, but let's see if you can now use the things that we've already proven and established. Let's try this. Let's prove that 4 is the same as 6. If I was writing a proof, I would say angle 4 is congruent to angle 8 because corresponding angles are congruent with parallel lines. I would then say 8 is congruent to 6, because vertical angles are always congruent, something we've proved. Now I've connected 4 to 8 and 8 to 6. My final line of my proof would say angle 4 is congruent to 6, because of the transitive property connecting those things. Easy stuff. So that gives us angle 4 and 6 are congruent. It gives us angle 3 and angle 5 are congruent. Another set. Alternate exterior. Now alternate exterior are the ones on the outside like 2 and 8. They're alternating and they're exterior. Now a good eye might say, hmm, those look equal as well. So let's try it out. Let's try a proof verbally. Angle 1 is congruent to 6. Sorry, angle 2 is congruent to 6 corresponding angles in parallel lines are congruent. Then we would say 6 is congruent to 8. Vertical angles are also congruent. 
and now using the transitive property 2 is congruent to 8. Also true would be 1 is congruent to 7. There are two more nice little uh, relationships hidden in here. The first group are called same side interior. Some books, some people use consecutive interior. This would be same side interior 3 and 6. This would be same side interior 4 and 5. These are not equal. So it's a different relationship. They are supplements. Now, I'm going to also talk you through this one verbally. I don't have time to write it all down. Here's what I'm going to say. 6 and 7 equal 180 degrees because linear pairs are supplements. Line 1. Line 2. 3 and 6, 3 and 7 are congruent and equal because they are corresponding angles with parallel lines. Line 3. I would make a substitution before it said 6 and 7 equal 180, but I would plug in the 3 for the 7 and say 6 and 3 now also equal 180 because of the substitution property of equality. I put in the 3 for the 7. Therefore, 3 and 6 equal 180, and so we can now conclude that 3 and 6 together are supplement angles, and also 4 and 5 are supplement angles. The final set is, is what you would expect that we're missing here, is same side exterior. So that's the group that are on the same side of the transversal, but like 7 and 2, they're on the same side, but they're on the exterior. And the logic actually is identical to what I just did, so I'll just walk you through it verbally. I would use 6 and 7 equal 180. I would use 2 and 6. I would use 2 and 6 are equal because they are corresponding angles with parallel lines. Therefore, 2 and 7 add to 180. So the last relationship, 2 and 7 add to 180, and also, um, sorry, 1 and 8 add to 180. They are supplements and supplements. Whew! I was moving fast. It's a lot of information. These guys are really important, important to understand where they came from, and now we'll look at applying them or doing the actual work.